Hey guys, what's happening? Um, so when this goes out, which is tomorrow, it will be the day before NaNoWriMo. I, I was trying to film a, a vlog for to go out tomorrow, but I um, didn't really like the footage. So yeah, um, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing for my NaNoWriMo and then I'm going to get into a tag. So basically, for my NaNoWriMo, I'm doing a rewrite of my novel called Stand Tall, They'll Break Your Heart. Um, if you watched last week, I did a, a work in progress tag, and I spoke about that and my other work in WIP called um, Iridescent. So it, I'm, my goal is 50000 for July, and I'm really excited, and I'm hoping to get a vlog out in a week, as well as a normal video like this. So the tag I'm doing today is the author origin story tag. I got the idea from Natalia Lee, um, who is a great YouTuber. If you haven't checked her out, you should go do it. Um, the original tag was by Evie Driver, I think. I hope I got that name right. I will also tag her below and where to get the questions from. Um, if you see me looking down, once again, that's because I have the questions in my hand printed out. Uh, yeah, I think there are 15 questions, so let's just jump into it. Question 1, backstory. When and why did you start writing? How old were you? What genres, what genres did you begin writing? So, the when, I was about 12. I had all these empty notebooks and stationery and things like that. And, um, yeah, I didn't know what to do with them. One day, my friends didn't come to school, like, both of them just took the day off. I hope they weren't sick. Um, yeah, and I just decided to start writing. It started out as self-inserts to, like, ways that I wanted life to go, like, life fanfiction, I kind of call it. I was 12, as I said, um... So a genre that I began writing was probably like fan fiction type stuff. Um, protagonist, what was your first main character like? How was, how has your taste and muses changed since then? So I'll jump forward from when I was kind of self inserting myself to, into things to when I actually created my first character. Um, her name was Belinda Charlotte. She was a twin. And it was fan fiction, and she was a little firecracker that kind of had everything go wrong that could go wrong to her. Um, how's it changed? Um, like I, I still write um, firecracker type characters. I don't think it's changed much in that, but I think my characters vary a lot more. Where back in the day, they were all kind of the same. So yeah, um, I'm not like yeah. I think that's the main way that they've changed. Antagonist. What's the worst writing advice or feedback you've ever received? What was the first rejection or confidence breaking experience like? I haven't really gotten much writing advice or um, really been rejected. Like, I kind of know all the flaws in my novels, so when they get um, pointed out to me, I kind of expect it anyway. Um, I do remember, um, last year in uni, like, my writing was kind of picked apart pretty terribly and that, that was kind of harmful, well, not harmful, but I kind of took that kind of badly, but I just kind of let that go and kept writing. Um, yeah, I don't really know that question. I try to just shrug the negativity off and I know that my writing hasn't always been the best and it's not going to be the best in the world and that's fine with me if people want to be unfairly negative then that's fine I, I always accept constructive criticism and number four superpower what part of writing or the writing process do you feel your greatest is your greatest strength for example showing first telling emotion drafting revising character flaws etc I'm really good at emotion I think I can really um, write emotional scenes really well like I've had compliments on that and when I read back some of my stuff I really get emotional myself um, yeah so 
someone else might say something different, but I think emotion is my is my is my jam. Number five, kryptonite. What part of writing or the writing process do you think is your weakest? So the actual writing, I think I use too much dialogue. I kind of and I kind of use said a lot. I really hate like he said, she said, but I do a lot. I um I know I use the word smirk a lot. And I hate editing. I have no idea what I'm doing whenever it comes to editing and revising. Training montage. What strengths or weaknesses changed over the years? Additionally, what have you done over the years to better your craft? When I began writing, I wrote mostly in script form. And then when I transferred over to trans... Transferred? Trans... Transitioned? When I transitioned over into like proper novel writing it was always first person and that's it and then I gave third person a go it was like a whole new world and I really enjoy writing mostly in um third person unless it's realistic fiction and then I write in first person but I think that's a big thing that's gone from weakness to strength um what have I done over the years to better my craft um I've read I read a lot more I I research what I don't know, like um, like I used to not know how to use the comma or the hyphen or things like that and I just know now instead of using them in the wrong context, I will just figure out what is the right context and yeah. And another thing that has changed is I can, even though I still hate the editing and revising thing like monumentally, I know... I can read over now and change things and that where before I used to just n not accept that my writing needed changing. Number seven, weapon of choice. What programs have you used over your writing journey? What is your favorite now and why? So I've used WordPad, I think it was called, like it's really one that used to come free on computers. Um, when I'm desperate, I've used Notepad. I've used Libre, which is a free open source if anybody needs something. Um, I've used Microsoft Word. I'm currently using Scrivener with Write or Die. I've used Google Docs. I've used pen and paper. Um, I really like pen and paper um, but I haven't done that in such a long time. So I think that my weapon of choice would be if you can see my cat again. I don't care. He's cute. Um, my weapon of choice would be at the moment would be Scrivener but I also really enjoy using Microsoft Word. I One of my favourite things about Scrivener is you can see how many words you've done in a writing stint without too much effort. Trusted sidekick. Every Robin, every Batman has his Robin. What is your favourite companion to cuddle or consume while writing? Has this changed over the years? If, if so, does um, this also differ from daytime to nighttime. Um, I always have one of my pets with me. Um, usually I'm cuddled up to this guy on my desk um, or or Angel who you've probably seen in other videos. I always have a bottle of water. I am really bad at like um, munching. Like I'm a really bad grazer. <laughs> In, to put it in animal terms, um, I pick the worst foods, but yeah, I always like to have something to munch on in one of my animals. Um, so yeah, they're my little sidekicks, and it doesn't differ from day to night. It hasn't really changed. It's always been one cat or another, one dog or another. When I um, used to write, when I lived at home with my mom, I used to use... I used to use the animals as laptop tables. Um, yeah, I've broken a lot of USBs like that and I wouldn't recommend it. Zero to Hero. When you first, number nine by the way, when you first began this journey, what level of success did you imagine for yourself? Where is where you, you're currently at on your writing journey, headed for the destination? If not, how has your dream evolved over the years? So when I began my writing journey, I was 12. And I did not have a very good grasp on reality. I I wanted to be, I wanted to have bought my own house and bought my mum a house by the time I was 22. And considering I'm nearly 32 and 
I don't own a car or a house. I think my um, reality views were very skewed. Am I on the path to that destination now? I think the destination kind of looks different now. Like now I just want to write. Like writing is the one thing that has always been there for me and never given up on me. So I just never want to give up on it. And as of last month, I really do think that I am kind of on a journey to getting published and keep on getting published. Um, so that one's really like hard to answer but um yeah I think I'm on a, on a on a journey to a pretty good destination whatever that destination looks like I'm not sure but I think that I have the the willpower to get somewhere good with my writing remember my name fame what authors help you realize your interest or passion for writing what books helped you shape your writing style genre of choice or tastes. So authors I really enjoy, Maria V. Snyder, Laurie House Anderson. I don't really have, so other than those two really, I don't really have favorite authors. I have books I enjoy and stuff like that, but most of my writing has been shaped off life interests. A lot of my writing has been inspired more by music than other authors. I, I do read books and learn like a lot about um setting and and how to actually write dialogue and yeah more music has shaped my writing style like when I'm with stories and genre and yeah um because of my high school experience and stuff like that I haven't really had the typical introduction into writing that a lot of writers do and I'm not trying to just generalize a lot of writers or stereotype a lot of writers but um number 11 marvel marvel vs dc marvel by the way um comparison is dangerous how has comparing your journey your author journey to others dismantled or helped your own any advice to overcome this oh i am always comparing myself to other people not necessarily other um known published authors but I'm just friends, people in my peer circle, like, I, um, have, like, an inferiority complex or I, or whatever it's called. Not even a week ago, I was, like, having a breakdown, um, that I would never, like, live up to that level or, or of the people in that group. Or when I compare myself to other people, it's really dangerous, um, because it can really get me quite down and... But what does come of that, which is quite positive, is that I usually come out of that with willpower or motivation just to be myself and that even though I want these people that I have just compared myself to succeed and reach their dreams and have the best of whatever they can have the best of, I just think that I just need to remember that this is my journey and it's not like everybody else's and I think if I was to turn that around for advice I'd be that people should just remember that all journeys are different even though I just said <laughs> yeah, all journeys are different and you shouldn't compare yourself to others because that is just dangerous in itself. Number 12 obligatory love interests looking back on your earliest projects what genres have you grown to love or hate to write? I don't really hate a genre. I don't know if I would ever like 100% write just plain romance or just like alien sci-fi type stuff. Like that just doesn't really interest me, but that doesn't mean to say I wouldn't read it or like, I mean, I don't like those type of stuff, but if the synopsis was good enough or piqued my interest enough, then maybe I would give it a go. Um, I would never really, I, at this moment, I don't think I would really write anything like that. Some genres that I do like to write, I love I love writing vampires. Um, I'm not so much into writing werewolves, but I'm into reading werewolves. Um, I just never really connected with werewolves the same way I do vampires. Um, I, love, I love writing paranormal romance, fantasy, realistic fiction, contemporary. I don't, even with music and other movies and things like that, I don't try to just 
stick to one genre and I think that's really important for me because I don't want to be like confined by a box or whatever. I know that my confidence just gets crushed when people just assume that writing is so easy and that they could do it. I mean, if it's so easy, do it. I've challenged people before if they think writing is so easy, if they think, if they think 50,000 words in a month is so easy or thinking out a story and everything else that goes with it, then they should do it. Like, if they want to prove to me how easy it is, they should, they should show me. Um, superhero name. When you began, did you consider using a pen name? If you are using a pen name now, why did you decide to use one? So this is kind of deep. It's going to be a bit of a story to it. And if the Divox watches, sorry, but I'm not sorry. If my mum watches this, I love you. I, I, I tried for a long time to think up a pen name that didn't associate with Diplock at all. I tried Monique Cherie, which was, which is obviously my first name and my middle name. I was going to try Ella Oliver, which is my dog's name and makes one of my cat's names. Then I decided, hell no to that, Diplock is my last name. When I was a, a baby, my father um, accused my mother of me not being his child. And that has been a theme throughout my life, even though I'm 100% his child. Like, I do not question that forever. If there was a speck of, what's it called, speculation that I wasn't his child, I would I would be fine with that. But I, I know my mum and I'm his child. You know, I even look like his side of the family. And I decided that, that Diplock was my last name. And... When, if I make something of myself, whether it be writing, whether it be, I don't know, I, I create bookcases and, you know, my name takes off and I just want to be the one to say that, yeah, it's my last name and I'm allowed to use it and, yeah, I wanted to take ownership of the last name because it was the name that my mum gave to me. I know that... If there was any chance that if I was I was not a diplop, I wouldn't have the last name diplop. Yeah, so um, that's a pretty long-winded babbly answer. Um, tag a few of your favorite people to do this on their channel. I'm probably gonna put that on an end screen. Because so this is the blog post of the week, and this is the book review of the week. Um, check them out on the links below. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe. And I will catch you guys later.